Welcome to Shovelware Diggers. Our dig team's currently excavating the Soft Key Shareware 2000 Hit Games 2CD Collection. You can find a link in the video description containing the entire directory structure of this archive. We have another week of team digs, and this is what our diggers have for us today. For more information on how to join the dig team, simply follow the Patreon link in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. First up, JP Ronnie and Jonathan Gosselin of Dug Up DOS Games backslash arcade backslash Galaga. Well, that seems a little on the nose, but I guess we'll find out what we got here. Um, oh wow, the executable is only 26 kilobytes big? Huh. Apparently it's from 88. It's like a huge text file. Text file is like half the size of the executable. <laughs> um, well, gb.txt. Let's see what we got here. So, Galactic Battle, apparently part of a fun and games thing. It looks like there's like formatting for this, so it's like something should have probably typed this out, but we only had the one executable, right? There wasn't anything else. Yeah, that's only the one executable file, so I have no idea why this would be formatted like that. Anyways, Galactic Battle is a space shoot 'em up arcade game for one player. Its setting is an interplanetary spaceship, which is controlled by its captain, you, against attacks by hordes of evil aliens. Your object in the game is to defeat as many of the enemy as possible while enhancing the features of your ship and maximizing your score, with an unnecessary comma to boot. Um, the game features an infinite number of levels, each consisting of 11 different waves of aliens. Let's follow 11 waves, one level, you proceed to the next. Okay, um, do any controls around here? That'd be good. Okay, so it says here that the number keypad on the keyboard is analogous to joystick movement. Okay, so we're actually using the different key, numeric keypad keys, but it says five is no movement, which suggests to me that maybe pushing a key makes you start moving and then you push again to stop. And then insert is, or insert the zero key on the keypad is to operate the energy shield and space bars fire. Okay, seems simple enough. Okay, it actually says right here that there's a game speed menu, so that seems to be something that we might be accessing. Although I currently have the cycle set to the equivalent of a low-end or original IBM PC or such. Because usually that's the best way to start when you're dealing with a something from... Oh, hello. Take a look at this. To run this program outside Big Blue Disk. Okay. Okay, now I understand why there's all this weird formatting here. So, I'm sure some of you are probably aware of the old, the old software subscription service called Big Blue Disc, because that's where John Romero and John Carmack got their start, making the Catacomb and Dangerous Dave games. Well... Apparently this was part of Big Blue Disk, so that explains why why the files are kind of weird. GB, let's see what we got. Um, apparently we've got a lot of black screen. <laughs> uh, hello? Uh, game? Oh, there it goes. This actually looks kind of familiar. Maybe I've seen this before. Galactic Battle. So it has absolutely nothing to do with Galga. Although, it does have some similarities. Oh yeah, right here. Published on Big Blue Disc number 39. So I guess maybe it wasn't, um... It wasn't the... John Romero and John Carmack's games was which debuted the, the Big Blue Discs. I thought it were, but... Huh? If somebody has any information about that, or, or, no, wait, I remember now. <laughs> oh, it's funny how you forget this kind of stuff. Big Blue Disc was already, yeah, it says right there, copy not right 1989 soft disc. So Big Blue Disc was going on before John Carmack and John Romero did their stuff. They were debuting the Gamer's Edge part of the Big Blue Disc thing. Okay, I remember that now. So yeah, this actually predates um, those games then. So, yeah, let's see what we got here. Funny thing is that this would technically be wares because you would need to actually purchase um, the big blue disc to be able to do, to play this or be part of that subscription. 
Okay, so one thing I should say about the controls right away is even though you can hold multiple keys at a time, like I can hold a direction and still press the fire button and it still works, I can't hold two directions. So I'm trying to move diagonally and it's not letting me. So you have to use the diagonal keys. And yeah, if you let go of a key, you stop moving. So the five key really is useless. I don't know why they even mention it in the text file. Okay, and I'm guessing dock with Starbase to re-energize? Okay. So that's level one, wave one. And apparently there's 11 waves for each um, level, so this probably goes on for a bit. Aliens ahead, prepare for battle. And we got a bunch of cubes. Actually, you know what? I know exactly what this game reminds me of now. Um, only problem is I don't remember. The, <laughs> I don't remember the name of the game that this is reminding me of. Is there a pause key so I can look this stuff up? Okay, I'll be back in like a second. You guys won't even notice. Okay, it was Mega Mania is the game I was thinking of. So Mega Mania was a game that Activision put out for the Atari 2600 quite a number of years ago. And this game feels a lot more like that game. Because in Mega Mania, you had an energy bar that was constantly ticking down, that was at the bottom of the screen. You had enemies moving in patterns at the top. You fired shots from the bottom of the screen. Now in Mega Mania, you could only move back and forth, but here you can actually move in all eight directions. And then the enemies are also firing shots down. So, yeah, this is basically feels a lot like Mega Mania. It also seems like there's a sort of combo system going on where if you can kill an enemy while a, while a score value is still on screen, the next score value is larger. That's kind of a neat idea. Now, the documentation was also men mentioning, like, different power-ups or upgrades or something. I haven't seen anything like that yet. So I'm wondering when those come into play. It might be like a between levels sort of thing, in which case I'm probably not going to get that far because we're only on wave four and there's 11 waves per level. So yeah, I might as well quickly check to see what the shield does. Oh, you hold the shield button down and it makes you immune to damage. Okay, but it burns your energy like crazy. Ooh, these enemies are just coming down straight in the line. Uh, is this going to be like the easiest mission ever? Yep. Although this one looks a little different, this starbase here. Is it going to give me like... Oh, we do get an enhancement here. Okay, so... I have um, three enhancers I can use from the looks of it. So I can either reduce energy use, increase firepower, increase shot damage... Skip next level or skip next three levels. Um, I'm going to say increase firepower. And I think that's the only thing I can actually afford at the moment. Yeah, so resume gameplay. I have no idea what that's going to do for me. Like, maybe it'll get me, like, two shots at a time? I don't know. Let's find out. Um, it makes my shot rainbow. <laughs> I have no idea other than that what it what this is doing for me. So yeah, this is Galactic Battle. It's basically a Mega Mania clone, but with di with different graphics and different aspects and it does play differently enough that it does feel like its own game and not a direct clone. Or like not a direct copy, I mean. So yeah, this is perfectly fine. Next up, Alex and Dookie have dug up DOS games backslash arcade backslash D cardiac. Are we seriously going to have like a game about cardiac arrest or something or? Well, that can't be it. It's not, especially with something that says card demo right there. Although that's kind of weird. Is this like a demo version of something given the fact that we've got like an advert and then just a demo executable? Well, it's a very small read.me, so let's type that out. Read.me. Um, CGA or EGA users, type start. Hercules, type Hercules. Okay. <laughs> Monochrome text-only computer users, pry open the wallet and buy yourself a graphics card. Unnecessary comma. Okay, the four-disc ACLS teaching series includes cardiac arrest, ACLS protocols, EKG teaching, cardio quiz for only 109 
dollars. Okay. Um, I'm trying to mentally process something at the moment here. So when you, when you start talking about commercial grade software, like software intended for, com for commercial entities to use, you're starting, now you're starting to talk about a kind of level of seriousness and professionalism that's kind of expected. Like, I mean, you don't write $3,000 software, which, by the way, I was writing $3,000 software, or helping to write $3,000 software, back in my math math software job, and you don't put in descriptions like, pry open the wallet and buy yourself a graphics card. I don't think I'd ha I don't think I would have had a job any longer if I put something up and put a message like that into the math software. Like if you're talking about that grade of software, you don't go off the serious path. <laughs> you don't get you don't get crazy. So what the heck do we have here even? Like I'm trying to can, I'm trying to think what this could even be at this point. Or who even made it? Especially if that's the readme. Um, well, it said to use the start.bat. Let's um, type out start.bat. Mad Scientist Software's Cardiac Arrest Demo Disk. Well, all it does is echo that stuff to the screen and run card demo. So here we go, card demo. Uh, apparently we've got an <laughs> heart rate monitor pulse right there. Cardiac arrest demo disk. Program sample, two of five patients from Mad Scientist Software, copyright 1986, Bruce Argyle. So we do have a name to blame for this. And we are suddenly in 600 by 200 mode. Okay then. Um, so random patient, easier patient, one demo only. P pediatric patient, specific problem, next patient on disc, instructions and advertisement. Uh, what's the instructions say? Cardiac arrest simulates a dying patient. It starts with basic data such as blood chemistry, temperature, pre-existing health problems, and heart damage. Based on probabilities, it determines what is the most likely patient status, and then returns to you the EKG and vital signs for the patient. When you want to order something, you type your order in plain English, then press the enter key. Your order is processed, and the program again calculates the patient's status. So, huh. So this seems almost less like a game and more like a kind of simulation. I'm noticing here that it says further information is found in the manual, and it seems to me that purchasing this game would come with a pretty thick manual, probably. <laughs> Um, the saying right here, cardiac arrest attempts to simulate a real-life situation as much as, as is possible. Consequently, it's possible to take the correct actions and still have your patient status get worse. So, it's basically... Yeah, it's basically like a sim... It's... I have to wonder, like, who this program is designed for, and how... Anybody, like, was it an actual doctor who wrote this? Was it somebody who just simply did a whole bunch of research? That would have been difficult to do <laughs> outside of outside of a university institute back in the 80s. Like, I mean, somebody, the person who wrote this must have had either some kind of medical training or is just winging it. <laughs> And I can't imagine winging it to be the thing, especially after reading the instructions here and seeing some of the descriptions of the commands that are being indicated in here. It, all, it seems to me like this is being written by somebody who actually has medical knowledge. Here in the advertisement section where it's showing the price tag of $69, which is a lot for a piece of software, it's actually saying here that the, um, that the user... It says here, our users find the variability and realism of this simulator to be as stimulating as an adventure game. Like, I mean, it suggests to me that this is a person who... Hang on. Look at the very top of the screen here where it says, thank you for buying the demo. That kind of suggests to me that 
even this demo version of the program might have actually had a fee associated with it. <laughs> yeah, and it's saying it's there's more references to the manual here. So without the manual, I don't think I'm going to be able to really play this. Like, I'm going to try, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do much. So let's see. Easier patient. Number rem Reminder of program options. So there's a cheat option, which, from what I understand from reading the documentation, just gives you recommendations on what to do. So I'll probably be using that quite a bit. Um, yeah, there are a lot of a lot of things we can give to people, like dopamine and morphine. <laughs> oh, geez. You're called to see a 71-year-old man who weighs 65 kilograms. He is recovering from pneumonia on the medical ward when the nurse found him unresponsive. His only medicine is penicillin. Lab tests were all normal a few days ago. He has no past history of heart disease. And IV is already in place. Well, this guy's dead. <laughs> only because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I'm immediately going to the cheat route. Okay, so it's suggesting that I ask again in five minutes. So observe five minutes. I think you'd better stick around. Um, I did not. Did I? No, no time has elapsed yet. Um, is there a wait? Can I do help? Oh, help actually does this the exact same thing as cheat, so... Oh, because CPR is currently being done. Okay, so I think if we just hit enter, it passes one minute of time. So that's two minutes, three minutes, four minutes. Okay, so five minutes have passed. Let's see, what does cheat say again? Okay, so this is like one of the kind of screens that can come up because all the different patient files that are included with the game, like with the full game, there's only two in the in this demo version, but the cheat system will actually like have large amounts of text to describe sort of what's going on and everything. So it's saying here, this is a major arteriolateral MI with unwitnessed arrest. Start hyperventilation and lab... Lab Earl, I don't. <laughs> I'm actually having trouble reading it just because. Well, one, it's it's squished at the moment for me because of what DOSBox does to the um to the the font, but it's also written in a sort of um medical manner, so it's kind of difficult for me to follow here. Okay, start hyperventilation and lab early as you follow the V-fib protocol. At the point where you'd consider bicarb, plan to give it if you haven't got APG, ABGs pending. Repeat the ABGs to assess the need for further bicarb, as this patient has a profound as 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 <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah, this this guy's gonna die because I have no idea what any of this means. Okay, so it says start hyperventilation and lab early. Like, I mean, do we have a list of commands? No. Can I just put in a question mark? Will that will that work? Well, <laughs> yeah. Apparently, whoever decided to copy this thing to a BBS forgot to include everything. Because it's about to quit the DOS. Uh, good job. So, yeah, that was, um, Cardiac Arrest Demo. <laughs> I'm really not sure what to make of this software. Like, it seems like something that was actually written by somebody with both programming knowledge and a medical background, because there's absolutely no way a program like this could have been made without medical knowledge, like with su without some significant medical backs background. So, is it worth the price tag, though? Well, I'm not actually qualified to make that judgment. 
I mean, if the program does everything it says it does and isn't being inaccurate about its about its um, computations and simulations and everything, then yeah, it probably would be worth the money for somebody who's like trying to learn this stuff. This almost seems like it would be a piece of a piece of software that would just help people memorize some of this stuff by sort of going through procedures that are simulated to some degree of randomness because it is saying that there is that the simulation is using it's using what was the word exact terminology it used I don't remember the exact terms it was using in the in the documentation here but it was basically saying that this stuff happens like in real life so it isn't always going to turn out the exact same way even if you're running the exact same patient file multiple times so yeah, I think this would be this would be interesting for those kinds of people. For random people who have no medical background whatsoever trying to play this, they're going to be like me and have absolutely no freaking idea what they're doing. And our last dig for today comes from Zinfidel ZT and Robert Mackey. DOS games backslash board backslash alfman eleven. Somehow I'm not expecting the Tanner family in this. Um, oh yeah, especially since it's actually called Alpha Man, not Alf Man. <laughs> uh, and also I see a Solsoft dot doc, so this is probably another piece of slow software stuff. So let's just see the file ID dot dis, because if this is slow software, then it probably has all the instructions in it. Alpha Man 1.1. Slow software has created another new fun-filled strategy logic game. Use Alpha Man to push your letter blocks into the proper places on the game board to solve each of the 25 puzzles. Yep. Let's go and run it. Because with slow software, you generally don't need that much in the way of instructions. And if you do, it's going to be in this program itself. So. Oh, we got a little bit of flashiness of the presents there. Alpha Man. And written by William Slow himself. So no personal scorecard's been found, so this is back when they were doing the whole scorecard thing. Okay, so we've got our puzzles here. So basically we're just choosing a word from the looks of it. And then we have to solve a puzzle of some sort based on that word. Okay, I think I got a ver fairly good clue of what's about to take place here. I'm going to guess that the moment we push one of these, it goes all the way. Yep. So what we're trying to do is get the letters, get the letter blocks into the appropriate place. Okay, so while waiting for the train to pass, I found out that this little green block here is actually referred to as the master block which I read about in the instructions. And basically you can push this one at a time. It doesn't move all the way like the master blocks do, or like the non-master blocks do, like letter blocks. So yeah, so basically you use this green block to help you push the other blocks around. So I can do that, push the H over there, and then push it down like this. And the only thing you gotta be careful of is the fact that this green block can't actually you can't actually um, move it out of the sides if you end up pushing it into the sides. So you got to be careful about that. So, like right here, I was gonna, I was about to push it all the way over and then push the P down here. But then, how would I keep it from going to where Alpha Man is right now? I'd have to ha push the green block down there, but then I wouldn't be able to use it anymore. So what I want to do is I want to push it here, push it down like that, and then I could push it across like that. Ah. And yeah, the other thing that would get complicated is if you end up pushing the green block somewhere where you can't really free it, you end up trapping it. So there's definitely a lot of things to consider while playing through this. Actually, now that I'm on the A, I don't actually have to worry about if the green block is stuck on the side anymore, as long as I can get the A where it belongs. And there we go. I actually solved that one. Um, let's try a harder one. Let's try Accountant. Ooh, this time we got red blocks in the mix. Red blocks don't move whatsoever. 
So it's kind of weird that this is being this is being um, linked to words because it's not really a word puzzle, is it? It's a push the blocks into the right spot puzzle. You could literally re replace the letters with numbers or symbols or icons or anything, and it would still be the exact same game. Although one thing I find amusing here is a number of these I can push into place without even having to um, use the green block. Okay, so here's a tricky thing. If I push this A across, it's going to get stuck because I won't be able to push it down from there. But if I use the, but even if I get the green block up there, I guess how do I even get the green block up there? It's not really a good way to push it. And I could start taking back my moves. Well, that actually takes a. Well, you're not allowed to take back that far. <laughs> Ooh, wish I knew that sooner. Yeah, I think we get the basic gist of it though. So that was Alpha Man. Uh, another game from Slow Software that's pretty simple in design, but pretty fun puzzle game if this is the kind of stuff you like.